I apologize for that large delay, but yeah, it turns out that wireless really, 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 really sucks. So I ended up going out and getting a 75 foot ethernet cable, which should solve the problems. Should. I, I'm not guaranteeing anything, but it, it should solve the problems. I've done it with ethernet cable before, and it solved all the problems. So I'd imagine it'll solve all the problems this time too. Anyhow, once we get this going, looks like big boy numbers are going to be ready to start as soon as we, well, basically now. So, we will be continuing. I, once again, apologize for that issue before. Anyhow, from what I can understand, big boy, at least when I left, before I left, the big boy's girlfriend was giving some play-by-play -play to his friend who was giving it to the RSC channel, and from there I gathered that Numbers had gone for either an Octo or a Faro Rush supported by a Chrono Bomb on Big Boy, and Big Boy managed to repel it and turn it into a massive expansion fest, from which point he was able to... Oh, lose, actually. So Numbers apparently won. Not sure how. I... I'm quite curious. I'll ask the RC channel how he won, because of course we weren't here. And like I said, I apologize, and no, there won't really be the game on, I, I, unless I get really lucky with the replay, but I, I'm not sure. But Numbers has won game one, so game two will be Big Boy's choice of map, and that will allow us to, let's see if this replays have come in, not, so yeah, that will allow us to at least get at least one game in. Okay, it sounds like Chrono Port at Sepi Ligos won the day, which does not surprise me, Sepi Ligos are quite useful unit in the late game, so Numbers using them makes perfect sense. Now, if take start it up, then we can quickly get started. Uh, and apparently, numbers is able to base hop rather effectively, which on hill actually on any map it's not too difficult, but on hills, I'd imagine it should be easier since you'd be base hopping to the resource crates, and that is easy to spot. Anyway, sounds like Big Boy didn't manage to scout him in time at any rate, and lost ultimately. So, well done to Numbers, we are on to game two, I do not know what... Ah, apparently Numbers had not put a secondary bases at the resource crates, he put them off-center from the resource crates. Which is a very good idea, because it means that it's a lot harder to find, since you can't just jump at the resource crates and assume you're going to find everything. So Numbers has started up the game, and he will be getting the match going soon. Once that's done, we will load up, and game two will start. I don't know what map though, I don't know if Big Boy's chosen the map yet. What map does Big Boy want? Okay, and Big Boy has chosen Imperium, Numbers has not yet decided whether to veto. I will ask. If Numbers decides to go with this, we will be on Imperium for... Oh, yeah. The... Okay, one sec. Numbers is curious about the version of the map to use. The map itself, all the maps and versions were given on a forum thread for the, for this tournament, and I'm just going to get him that list. This is a very important list to know what maps, because of course maps get updated all the time. The various issues come up, and sometimes there's total redesigns, and it's important to know which versions are the tournament versions. So I believe the latest versions in general are. It's still worth knowing just for the sake of completeness. Anyway, in this case, Imperium is version 1.9.1. Because I believe that Meryl Vigine has updated Imperium since the tournament started, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm actually fairly certain he hasn't updated the maps at all since then, but for the sake of com completeness, version 1.9.1 of Imperium. So numbers will figure out whether he wants to veto that, and once he does, we'll either start the game, or figure out whether he wants to veto that, and once he does, Shit. we'll I... either start the game, or... Sorry. If you heard that, that was because my... Sorry, I had the stream up myself. Sorry. As I was saying. If you heard that, that the... was because my... Sorry, I had the stream up myself. As I was saying. So, 
back to the game. Numbers has hosted Imperium 1.9.1, 1. and we will be start. Wait, what? Back to the game. Numbers has hosted Imperium wait, why am I? 1.9.1. 1. Okay, wait, I'm not. What the? Is this echoing? Okay. Test. Okay, apparently my. Okay, my my dialogue has stopped going through time. Yes, it has. Okay, good. So now we are once again criminally stable. That was bizarre. Okay, seriously, that was just a weird feedback loop because I had Firefox on accidentally. Sorry about that. I needed to check the stream. I had the stream on. And I had it paused originally, but I turned off Firefox for RAM. I used to do it. Anyway, so numbers in Big Boy are negotiating Corona Port alerts, figuring out they want to have it on. And I'm just going to get back on there. So numbers is okay with Corona Port alerts, so we will have that. It's a lot easier to see what's going on. Note that observers will always see the Corona Port alerts regardless of the game setting, but players will not see it unless the game setting has it on. This is just a little message that says Chronoport departure detected or Chronoport arrival detected in the top left corner of the map right, or game I should say right about here. So game is starting loading up and now that we have a proper Ethernet cable it should be a lot more stable. So this is Imperium. It is one of yeah Marilyn did actually edit this map later on because we were trying the new paradigm and he attempted he put some boxes over here. And this is not the case in version 1.9.1 .1 in the tournament version, because of course I want to change the maps during the tournament. That would just that's just not right. You don't it, changing the game version is inevitable sometimes, but changing the maps can be avoided and should, if possible. So, let's see, neither player has loaded up completely yet, but once they do, we will get ah here we are numbers and player. T what the? Oh, not again. Well, at any rate, the good news is. So big boys in the top right corner. I'm gonna have to go back to the. I'm not sure what is going on with that. I have to look that script up actually, because that should not be happening. Anyway, numbers is playing Greckham, and big boy is playing Vekir. Big boy is in the top right corner of the map. Numbers is in the bottom left corner of the map. Both players are going for the standard start. Numbers is getting his economy build up, getting a fire, and then getting some octos for RPs. And a Zynvir is being used to build RPs for Big Boy, though interestingly not in a queue, he's building them one at a time. Which is a little unusual, but he seems to be ha making good time on it, so it's probably not a big deal. Anyway, Numbers has just set up his Octos as well, so getting his RPs set up, and he could get another one set up quite soon, or at least he has enough resources for a single extra Octo on top of this, but I would doubt he's going to go for it unless he gets the LC, because he needs that LC to build these RPs, and of course that is... If he doesn't have that, it's going to be very confusing for him later on, trying to remember what RPs were there. So, as we see, Big Boy is just finishing up last of this little Zine, or Zine Beard resource setup. And Numbers has also got his Octo, probably a Triad Octo, probably not a resource Octo. Like, it's kind of an older style to build an Octo very quickly to get a Triad up to get a Seppi in it. Using it to scout, probably first, and then going from there to build it, Seppis and Faro's with that Octo. And the Octo is well coming in for the resource processor to handle that. So both players, actually looks like... Oh, okay, I see. Scouting for Big Boy has been cancelled. Big Boy has found what he needs to know on the blue time wave. As you can see the blue time wave, he does see the Arcticus, he is attacking it, and he is ultimately going to know where Numbers is and what Numbers is. And of course Numbers, his Octo is coming along on the blue time wave. Actually no, not on the blue time wave, behind the blue time wave. So Numbers is now just seeing the Octo get into the base and the Zion Church are attacking. And in the last game, just started out, this is a very similar start to game one. Big Boy going for the Zion Torture very quickly, and Numbers going for this Octo Scout and very quick Triad. Likely to build a Seppi or use this Seppi after draining it to. Oh, no, it's getting Octopod, that's different. Because before he. Once the Seppi got all tired out, he would lift it up and then get a new Seppi to get in the Triad. Because, I mean, seriously, Progeneration is tiring. Come on. That's. It's all his energy. They're just completely out of energy. I'm, it's. I, okay, I just, I'm, I'm setting myself up for way too many jokes that don't fit on this channel that are probably not age-appropriate since the channel is technically rated PG, or I think it's like PG or like appropriate for all ages. So I'm going to stop right now, but I think you can get where I was going since Progeneration does create new Grekum by multiple Grekum cooperating in order to do so. Anyway, looks like we see Big Boy is building 
looks like he's going for a Bastion or something, or at least a Foundation right next to his RP. He's very worried about Faropods, apparently, because this, Bast this Foundation will allow him to detect any Faropods coming in the back to attack his RPs, so he's clearly very worried about it. Now, a Zion Church, or Zion Pulsar, Zion Church is down here, attacking RPs from numbers on the bottom right corner of the map, and a Zion Pulsar coming in in the northwest, and at the very northwest, the Zion Veer is building more RPs, so Big Boy going for a very fast expansion, while numbers is about a minute down from there, and he is getting advanced archers, he has the Octopod for defense, and he has a Faro right ready for building up a Spire, so it looks like he's jumped away, so I get a discontinuity. Anyway, his... I have two Octos coming in as well here, that will be useful. Both players are going back, being very concerned about the attacks coming in, and... Also, it looks like he's concerned about Big Boy Chrono Rushing, which he is apparently not, in fact. It doesn't look like he is actually Chrono Rushing. He is going just for auto defense. He appears to be more paranoid and just trying to do some preemptive strikes than anything. Not too worried about getting Chrono Porting at an early time or anything like that. He's just apparently worried about the Faropods. And Octo coming in as well, scouting in. So Numbers is sending his scouting Octos in from several angles, trying to figure out what's going on. And he'll definitely figure that out soon enough, although Blue Time Wave is carrying this new Octo, which is going to die very quickly. The Zion Veer will, actually all the Veer class units will take care of it. And this is the Zion Pulsar we saw jumping around, the Zion Turtle we saw jumping around earlier, but it looks like Big Boy might... No, he, he's definitely jumping around with it still. Nothing has changed in this regard. Both players are just a bit concerned about what's going on in the past, because generally the first reaction we see your opponent jumping into the past is a jump into the past yourself, since you don't know what they're going to do, but what they're going to do might end up adversely affecting you and what you're planning on doing. So, it's often a good idea just to double check, make sure nothing is changing that's too big, but in this case, numbers isn't really changing too much yet, he is just focusing on a standard build order, making sure that big boys are changing anything. Both players are basically just paranoid of each other, trying to figure out what each other is doing, not really sure, but also not wanting to take any risks about the other player actually doing something that would harm them. At the moment, though, it's pretty standard. Nothing nothing too intense in terms of temporal shenanigans. Just jumping around, making sure there's not a lot of expansions. Both players trying to scout out the other's expansions and counter-scout the other expansion. In terms of the Zion Turch, trying to make sure the Octa doesn't stop the expansion from going up. And it looks like a minute, or a minute and a half down from here, we see... The Octo coming in from yet another angle, trying to harass these RPs, and Big Boy, realizing it, is moving his Veer class. So, Numbers is just sending this little Octo back and forth from each side of the base, trying to make sure that the Veer class units end up getting tricked into letting it through and actually damaging some of the RPs, trying to undermine Big Boy, which is not a bad idea, though I don't know if it's the best use of his attention in Chrono Energy, since that is going to be, eventually, his entire bar of Chrono Energy just to do that one move. And I don't think he'll be able to do it, but it looks like he's going straight to the Unplayable Past Edge, and... No, he won't. He is... His Octo is going straight to attack the Shin Veer here, and that is going to be the end of it. No, maybe not. No, it's actually going behind the base entirely, though I don't see how this is going to help unless the Big Boy's units won't be able to get close enough. But once he gets Auto Defense up, this foundation will stop it entirely. And even then, the Shin Veer is close enough. Big Boy is going to be able to stop it, though he doesn't have a lot of current energy left. He only has one Order's worth. While Numbers has jumped back to about a minute and a half behind the press, about 517 mark. And now there's an Aero Control Center coming up, but the Octo's focus on the Foundation and Numbers is more focused on getting the Faropods and Sepipods, which is exactly what the concern was. And since if this Foundation is going down, this is going to be very bad for Big Boy, but I doubt it's going to... Oh, okay, I see it's not going to go down, since the Veer Cluster needs to stop the Octo, which is pretty obvious it's going to happen. There's really no reason to leave that alive. So the Octo has been stopped, the Harassment has been stopped, but two Octos are going to the Northwest Expansion of Big Boy. And of course, Numbers is just a little scout here, the RP, to make sure that nothing gets through, although we can't really see anything from here. The RP is very short vision range when being used to actually harvest resources. Anyway, back when numbers is the 525 mark, his Sebi Paws and Fire Paws are almost complete. Sebi Paws are complete, his Fire Paws are almost complete. And he has found what's going on here, and actually has a dome set up too. One of the Octos has turned into a dome, and Big Boy, 453 mark, realizes this, and has a Zion Pulsar back here to try to take care of it, though I don't know if that Zion Pulsar was there in the first place, and if it was, that's not going to be good news. That means that Big Boy's attempt to deal with this, deal with this is not successful, and I doubt it will be. No, the Octo has managed to get rid of the Zion Pulsar before it dies, so the Zion Pulsar might be able to take care of one of them, and it will, yes, it got rid of the one of them, but the other one's turning into a dome, the other Zion Pulsar will be able to take care of it in time, and that dome will not go up. So, Big Boy has managed to save his base, but Numbers looks like he doesn't want to actually hear anything of it. Going back time again to try to deal with this. Doing a bit of a better job this time, but it doesn't look like it's that much better. The Octo is 
still going to be attacked to the point that, no, it's not changing anything. So that Octo is going to die, the harassment is not going to work, and Big Boy's harassment on numbers actually seems to be doing pretty well with Zion Turcher. And Sepipod coming in to help out, and it looks like Zion Turcher actually just chronoported, or not, teleported, sorry, teleported back here, not chronoported, what am I saying? No one has chronoporting yet, that would be right here. That'd be Gate Tech or chronoporting right about there. But he does have teleport, he has a skip teleport, the self teleport here. And that allowed him to get behind the base, but it looks like Numbers is going to be able to take that out. But no, he's jumped away. Did some harassment, but not enough for Numbers to actually punish him for it. So, Big Boy doing a pretty good job with harassment, and doing a better job of harassment than Numbers is right now. Numbers really should be focusing on just building up what he can, getting maybe a couple more RPs in his main base, and just building up what he can, getting a few units, and using that for a larger assault. His Sephiroth is doing a fairly good job against the Zion Turcher, though. Zion Turcher has anti-air weaponry, but not very strong anti-air weaponry, so that will be quite useful. And the cloak is almost run out, but it doesn't matter. Sephiroth can detect, so that won't be much use. However, Big Boy has teleported away that Zion Turcher to save it, so the Zion Turcher, while still damaged, will not die. Numbers, of course, going back. He does have the Sephiroth. He is checking out this area of time. His Sephiroth is up. His Pharopods did not get up. He can't afford a Pharopod right now, though. I don't know if he's going to build it, but he does have the energy to do so. And it looks like he is just building some more base class units. He's not going for a Pharopod, he's just going for base class units. While Big Boy is going for a foundation on top left corner of the map, and Ted Turch is coming in as well. So Big Boy definitely getting ready for air attacks, and really all he needs is a Shin Turcher to deal with every... Oh, there it is! There's a Shin Turcher, all right. So he has a Ted Turcher and Shin Turcher. He could use a couple more, but at this point, Numbers isn't building enough units to make it that worthwhile. So... Big Boy just teleporting around the Zion Turcher. His harassment was partially effective, it slowed down the resource processors, and damaged him quite a bit. But that's not going to be it. Well, I, mean, I would say it's not going to be enough, but Numbers really needs to actually get back into this. He's falling behind a fair bit. His base class units are numerous, and he does have quite a few, but he really should get well as far out there. I'm a bit surprised he isn't building air units, given how much he invested early in the game to get that Spire, to get the Reese, just getting that early air. Right now, all he has is a Sepi Pod, which isn't going to do much good against a Teth Turcher and a Shin Turcher. Well, Shin Turcher, not really, but Teth Turcher, yes. And the Shin Turcher attacking the Southeast expansion, so Numbers' little expansion is getting damaged, though, right now, it seems his RPs are mainly being used for scouting, just to see what's going on, rather than being used for. I mean, obviously, processing helps, but scouting is a big part of it. Now, just to note, this RP, while being heavily damaged, was on was on Q Plasma, and Numbers has 700 Q Plasma right now, which means he's going to have an easy time dealing with this. While the Seppi's coming in, will not be able to save it in time. Numbers, back when he is, about a minute up from when we are, he is actually dealing with the... No, I should, should watch that, because he's dealing with the Zion Turcher, and Big Boy has not jumped away. He's more focused on... Well, he's more focused further in the future. He doesn't appear to be building much more. He has a Zion Turcher teleported back, so he's likely to save it in this case. But, really, his big thing is his harassment. He's doing very well with the harassment as well, and his expansion is doing quite well, but needs to start building up. I don't know if he's built up in the future. I'm going to check. In... See, at no real point in the future did he build up much, but he does have... Actually, both players have chronoporting by the 920 mark. Back at the 9, 840 mark, we see that both players are getting chronoporting in gate tech. So now that chronoporting does exist, we're going to be seeing, likely, on the, either the green time wave or the red time wave, one of the units coming in, and I'm guessing it's going to be... Oh no, there's a slip gate up here as well. So it could very well be Big Boy chronoporting back his units, but likely that first chronoport was the Sephipod back here. More than likely it was the Sephipod. Yep, there it is. So that chronoport going back there and will be... Well, would have been dealing quite a bit of damage, but this Teth Turcher stopped it. Actually, more so, the Arcticus stopped it. It got automatically set to this Arcticus, so it's going to be helping out with the Arcticus harassing once that comes in. So that will be helpful, but not super helpful. The Teth Turcher itself had already dealt a lot of damage to the Sepipod, so the Sepipod is not going to be able to do much. And it looks like Numbers checking the timeline around the point where the Chronoport arrival occurs, as the time with prop well, the green time I've already propagated it. Checking what's going on, and it looks like he might be actually re chronoporting that. And yes, he appears he did. That Sepipod is in a better spot to harass this time around. So that Sepipod has been chronoported back twice, and that Sepipod as well has been chronoported back. Yes, a Sepi and a Sepi bot have been chronoported back to help deal with all this stuff. Getting rid of the Shin Beer before it builds the foundation, or would be if Numbers had direct control over it, however he does not. He does, however, have the RPs being harassed and attacked, and Numbers is still losing this. The Teth Turcher manages to get in and take it out, so that Sepi bot isn't going to be able to do enough to actually deal with this base in time. Though it did harass the RPs, 
slowing... I don't know if he really slowed down Big Boy too much, though. He doesn't have Gay Tech, and this is the time when both players would have had Gay Tech, so it looks like Gay Tech has actually been cancelled because of this RB harassment. So well done, numbers. You stopped Gay Tech from Big Boy. So Big Boy does not have Gay Tech at this point. He cannot build a slip gate, and he cannot corner port back his own units. He also doesn't automatically get skip teleport, but that's beside the point. The point is, the Chrono Bomb is coming into his main base, will be getting his base forward, and apparently this happened in the original game too, or sorry, game one as well. And here's the Octos coming in for RP expansion, so Numbers is just basically trying to convert from his little turtle stage to an expansion stage with harassment pushing the base into the future along with the Zion Pulsars that were there. And of course this will be coming back any second now from when we are about the 11.30 mark probably, we're at 11.15 mark. But still, that's a lot of... That's some time. Numbers has now bought himself some time to build up his forces and really get himself in a position where he can actually get map control. That was the big thing he was missing right now. And at this point, Big Boy has lost map control and Numbers has not completely capitalized on that, though. Numbers, back when he is... Well, when he was, before he left, he does have map control more so, but he doesn't seem to be totally capitalizing on it yet. He is definitely focused... Okay, here's the Chrono Port arrival. So now, actually the 12-13 mark, later than I expected, we see that Big Boy's base has returned. Or rather, this is when it was Chrono Port 2. And Numbers has managed to get some more RPs in the middle of the map, but he doesn't have his forces out to defend. He does have a Chrono Port happening, though. It will be happening, carried on the green time wave, and... Let's see, where did it go? It is... No, that's the Chrono Port departure of the Sepipod we saw before. But it looks like Numbers has had a Chrono Port arrival, because he, otherwise why would he go back this far? Though I cannot see this Chrono Port arrival on my timeline, and it appears that Gate Tech is being researched. So, Big Boy is able to get Gate Tech again, and he is also macroing closer to the present, as one should. Well, actually, he's macroing here, and will likely be macroing over here as well. A bunch of Zyme Pulsers, a bunch of Tin Pulsers, at the 1352 mark. He's about a minute ahead of Numbers, so this is quite risky. This may not actually end up happening, but... First iteration, first pass, trying to make this happen, and doing a lot of damage. Design Pulses are completely taking care of this expansion. It had... well, okay, Design Pulses were taking care of the expansion, of course. Things have changed, because this is after Time Wave Pass and a Chronoport did occur. Not a Chronoport, sorry, not even a Chronoport, just a straight-up attack! Numbers is attacking Big Boy's base directly at the 1307 mark, probably trying to, to stop what just happened, we were just seeing at the 1352 mark. Though, given the amount of units that have been coming to Big Boy's base from his depot. I seriously doubt that's going to change much. And of course, Gate Tech has been completed. So unless Numbers has planned to chrono for these units back in order to actually do this attack, and it, he very well may have, though I do not see this chrono port here. I do not see any attacks going in from it. I do see a bunch of units harassing this base, but once again, that already kind of happened. Though to be fair, it appears that it didn't... No, this must have been where the chrono port must have occurred, because these units were not getting in the first time around. And this is why I said earlier that OBS games are a bit more difficult to do because, of course, it's not always clear where things happen because they don't get the timeline information, which is unfortunate, but I have to live with it. Anyway, so this is the 13-3... No, this is the 13-3-2 mark. This is another Chrono Bomb has occurred on the main base. Quite well done, too, because right after the... Yes, right after the Chrono Port delay stops, everything is Chrono Port of the future again. Ouch. So Numbers has just done it again, but still a bit more time. And instead of this expansion a bit better, and also getting rid of the north e northwest expansion, so Numbers is doing a very good job with the Chronos shenanigans. And here's the far pod that people were that was being talked about. And it looks like Numbers is trying to progenerate legal class units, but messed up his placement of his far pod. Not really too worried about it, just forcing it into Big Boy's base, and Big Boy's base is now returning at the 1444 mark. And Big Boy has GG. He's he's gone. So wait a sec. No, he didn't GG. That that was he lost, but I think. Crap, he lost because he didn't have... Okay, what basically happened is the actual win condition is that if you lose... Sorry, if you lose all your units and all your buildings, like all your production buildings and military units at a certain point in time, you'll actually end up... You'll lose the game if it falls off the left edge of the timeline. So the Chrono Bomb actually caught numbers to win because... The Chrono Bomb forced away all of the military units and production structures that were on the timeline at the time. Although, this annex should count. I'm not sure what happened there. Regardless, Numbers was on the path to winning, but he won. The game says he won. I feel really strange right now. But 
Anyway, numbers is one. Well done to numbers. I we're all a little confused because that's that particular application of the rules doesn't come up much, and may not actually be a good thing. I, I have to double check on that. But that is how it's supposed to work. Like that that is correct. It's just that it's also kind of bizarre. So that like I said, that's that's how it works. That is actually how it's set up to work, and I'm gonna file a bug report. After this after this is done, I'm gonna file a bug report. But in the meantime, we have the new bracket, so numbers has one, two, nothing. And yeah, I, I don't know. Like I said, Chrono Bomb. That's what it was. It was the Chrono Bomb had changed everything because the Chrono Bomb pushed everything towards the future, causing there to be a point in the timeline where Big Boy did not have units or buildings, and that point in the timeline fell off the timeline. So, actually, if Big Boy had Chrono Ported back a single unit to that point in time, he would have stayed alive, which is bizarre. Like I said, it's a bit iffy, but... Yeah, it, that basically, combined with like, the Chrono Bomb and also... Combined with the chronoporting attacks on Big Boy's expansion, which is the only part that actually had buildings left, meant that there was basically nothing that Big Boy had that counted as being part of the game buildings that would allow him to win. Probably foundations should be counted because that was still alive. Regardless, it should be looked into. Anyway, that was bizarre, but according to the game, fair. So that's that's the game. That was bizarre. Anyhow. I'm going to just stop the stream for now, and then we'll start up again with Stahana vs. Shalka. This is not live, this is actually originally going to be a replay, but the replays haven't come in yet. I mean, this is remember, this is being resumed after a long period of hiatus. So, wait, I didn't want to show that. This is being resumed after a long period of hiatus, so it's going to be a bit tricky as far as like getting everything organized. But, we do have the game three. So game one and game one and two, Sakana and Shalka one. So game three is going to be the big clincher. And of course everyone watches game three anyway. Who stays for game one and two? So the big exciting game, game three, is what's gonna come up next. Stay tuned.